In this video we're going to talk a little bit about the command line interface. We are not going to delve into very very deep details yet, uh, but I want to give you a feel and an idea of what the command line interface is all about, and more specifically in this case we're using the bash shell interpreter. So I want to give you kind of an overview of what, uh, what you can do with the bash shell. So the first thing that I would like for you to, to understand is that when you're using a command line interface in uh, Linux, you have at your fingertip pretty much a, a programming language. Okay, the bash interpreter is actually uh, can be used to write scripts, to write program, to execute them. Um, so what you type here when you interact with a shell, like for example here I just typed a command named ls, which stands for list storage. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the DOS um, command uh, shell, uh, this is just showing me what kind of files and folder are at my current location in the file system. Okay, so I'm logged in here as a specific user, Tux. The prompt of the shell, which is this part here, tells me my login name, the host name on which I'm logged, and then where I'm located on the file system, and then we're going to come back to that tilde, um, tilde um, abbreviation here, that just means my home directory, and then a dollar sign, that means, you know, I'm ready to to uh, interpret whatever command you want to type. So here I type the command ls, um, and I use the term command, but we're going to get more specific than that. And the bash shell executes that command on my behalf and tells me, okay, well, at your current location, which is your home directory, these are all the folders you can find in blue and all the files you can find in white. Okay, so that's, that's where most people see the, the interaction with the, the shell going on. As a matter of fact, there are more than just um, simple quote-unquote commands that we can type in a shell. There are actually one, two, three, four, five different things that we can uh, tell the shell to do, that five different types of things that we can tell the shell to execute on our BL, okay? So let's go over that, that list real quick. The first type of stuff we can ask the shell to do for us is referred to as built-in commands. So built-in commands, as the name might suggest, are commands that the shell knows already how to process. Uh, just to peek a little bit ahead, when I typed ls, uh, ls is not something that the shell knows how to do for me. So the shell had to find the ls command on the disk and execute it. But there are things that the shell can interpret by itself without having to find a command on the disk and execute it. For example, the echo um, echo statement, which is just pretty much a way to, to display a message on the screen. If I say something like echo double quote, hello space there, and close the double quote, there we go. This is a shell interpreting that built-in command named echo uh, to, to do something, to display something on the, on, the, on the screen. And there are a bunch of these. We are going to, to go into more details as the, the course pro progresses. Uh, but for example, we have an echo uh, built-in command. We have a PWD built-in command, and PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory, is just telling me where I am currently located in my file system. So right now, I told you already that the prompt was reminding me with this little notation here that I was in my home directory. Well, this is what my home directory is like, okay? So it's located, if you start as a root of your hard drive, the slash here, it's located under the folder home, and then, again, a slash, it's located under the subfolder tux, which happens to be my username. Okay, so that's generally the convention. Your home uh, directory is going to be in slash home folder and is going to have the name of your username. Okay, so there's a, there are a bunch of, uh, of uh, built-in commands like that. You can, uh, you can go to the, the bash manual. We're going to talk more about how to access the, the manual page for the bash shell interpreter. Um, but, uh, but you can go online and just do a search for now on bash built-in. You're going to get a list of all the, the commands that are available like that, that are directly implemented inside of the bash shell. And one of them is particularly interesting for the purpose of discussing, you know, what are the different types of commands that the shell can execute for you. Its name is type. So if I say type pwd, okay, so I call the built-in command type, so the shell is going to do something for me, and I ask it 
tell me about PWD. Tell me what kind of command that is. And it's responding by saying PWD is a shell built-in. So if I was doing a type echo, same thing. Echo is a shell built-in. And of course, if I was doing a type type, type is a shell built-in. So that could be useful, you know, for us to, to actually figure out, you know, if a certain command that we are that we are reading about, that we are seeing somebody else use, is actually something that the shell can inherently do for us, or if it's an external command or any of the other type of commands we are going to discuss. Okay, so that one is going to be very, very useful. Another one that we're going to discuss in more detail later is alias. So if I just type alias like this, it's going to list for me all the alias, all the shortcut uh, that are available. For example, this is telling you that right now in the shell, if you type the command ll, well, ll is not really a built, it's not at all a built-in command. It's not even uh, an external command. We're going to define this in a second. It's actually just an alias, which means that every time you type the command ll, what the shell really does is immediately replaces it by ls space dash alf. Okay, and then it runs that instead of ll. So here's an example, I type ll, I get this listing of all the files in my current working directory. And you can see that this is much more detailed than what I get when I use just ls. The reason for that, and I'm going to, to show you here how to recall previous commands by just using the upper row in your shell, okay? The reason for that is that if I look at the definition of the alias, at some point I said that ll was to be replaced by ls, followed by this dash or minus or hyphen alf. And these are what we call options. So we're going to cover that also in a little bit. Okay, a lot of things here are popping up. So to go back to, to our main flow here, we were discussing the different type of things that the shell can, can execute for you. So we talked about built-in commands. Okay, perfect. Now there are other things that are recognized by the shell. Uh, these are keywords. So we are not going to talk about them a lot right now, but I'm just I just want to show you what they look like. So for example, the keyword if while, for, um, these are like reserved keywords for the shell. So you cannot use them as variable name. You should not use them as variable name, obviously. Um, they are also as special meaning. So they are not built-in commands. They are not what we're going to talk about next, external commands. Uh, they are just reserved keywords. And as you can tell from the, the, the look of them, um, well, these are mostly used for when we're going to actually write scripts. Okay, so we'll come back onto that like later, way later, after we are, we are done covering the basics of uh, Bash interpreter usage. So we talked about built-ins, we talked about keywords, so these are already two types of things that the shell can uh, recognize and interpret for us. We talked actually also about alias, so they form a category of their own. The last one I'm going to talk about, I'm going to skip over function because again, that's the topic that's more appropriate to discuss when we deal with um, when we deal with scripting. But the last one I'm going to discuss about, which is uh, actually very very commonly encountered, is external uh, external um, commands. So what are external command? When I type ls, I told you ls is not a built-in, okay, it's not a keyword, it's not an, well, it is, it is, it can be an alias, I couldn't have an alias named ls, but if I look at my current uh, list, well, actually, yeah, if I look at my current list of alias, I can see that I have an alias defined here that says whenever I type ls, I want to execute ls dash dash color equal auto. So that kind of sounds like a recursive definition, really, but what it means is ls is actually an external uh, command. So what does it mean that it's an external command? It means that it's actually an executable uh, that is available in the file system. Uh, that's a program that can be run whenever I invoke it from the shell. Okay. Another example of such a command would be date. All right. So date is telling me the, the, the current date. Okay. If I just uh, type date, if I do type date like this, okay. Is telling, it's telling me that it's actually it's hash, so we're not going to go in detail for that, but it's telling me more importantly that it is corresponding to an executable located on disk at the location slash bin slash and then the name of the executable. So it's that's what an external command is. An external command is a program that has been compiled, that is ready to run on your system that you launch through the bash shell. 
okay so just for a laugh let's type type bash here bash is itself the name of the program okay this is our shell interpreter there are a bunch of them in the, in the unix and linux tradition the one we're using on ubuntu by default is bash so that means that if i was asking my current shell bash okay to run an external command that just so happened to be named bash it would just do so without any problem so what is not obvious here when you look at the screen is that i had already a bash interpreter running in my terminal i asked that bash interpreter to execute an external command bash how does it know it's an external command? Well, it checks if it's an alias. There's no alias. It checks if it's a keyword. It checks if it's a built-in. None of that match, so it has to be an external command. So it goes and tries to find where the executable corresponding to bash could be. And there's a way to, to find those things. It's called the path. We're going to talk about that in a few videos. But bottom line is that it finds on the disk in the location slash bin slash bash an executable named bash and runs it for me. So now what I am dealing with here is I have a bash interpreter running on top of another bash interpreter. Um, how can I see that? Well, if I type exit, that should close my window, right? Well, it doesn't. It just stops the execution of the bash shell that has started here. So on this line here, I told my current bash shell start a new bash shell. It started, and this prompt was actually displayed by the new bash shell that was telling me, hey, what's up? What can I do for you? Well, I didn't have much uh, imagination, I guess, so I just said, well, nothing really. I just wanted to try starting you up, so I type exit. Now that bash shell tells me, okay, goodbye, and I'm back to the original bash shell. Well, that's exactly in less interactive manner, that's exactly what happens when you type ls, right? Except that ls has an alias, but forget about that for a minute. Uh, if we didn't have an alias on, on the ls command, right? When I type ls, ls is not a built-in, it's not a keyword, so it's going to be executed uh, from the disk, there is a slash bin ls command, and what happens is that the bash is going to execute that ls program. The ls program takes over, does its job, which is displaying everything, every folder, every file that is in my current working directory, then terminates and I'm back to the original bash uh, telling me, well, what can I do for you next? That's exactly what happened here, except that here this command is not interactive, so it does its job, display an output, a result, and then uh, pretty much terminates. This one here is an interactive program. So I start it and then it takes over and say, okay, I'm going I am the one talking to you now in this terminal. So it just happened that well, the prompt is the same because, well, I'm running bash on top of bash. But if I was running a different uh, shell, for example, sh is another shell, you can see that now I started from my original bash shell, I started a new shell, and this new shell has a different prompt, has a different, actually, syntax, behavior, etc. So I can still do things with that shell, I interact with that new shell, and then when I'm done, I can simply say, okay, I'm done, exit, and I'm back to my previous shell. So that's the that's core idea here. The core idea is that the bash shell interpreter, like the name implies, is just waiting with this prompt to interpret command that you give it. And those command can be built-in command, in which case bash itself will be happy to do the job. Uh, they can be keywords, we'll talk about that later, function, talk about that later. They can be aliases, in which case the bash shell is going to look up that table of alias here that you can display by just typing alias and enter. And it's going to say, okay, when you typed ls, what you really meant is ls dash dash color auto, uh, equal auto. And it's going to execute that instead, okay? And then it could, it could be a command like date, a command like ls, a command like, that there are like thousands of, of tools like that that are available on your Linux system, right? And these are like external commands, so this is a, the default uh, situation when something is not a built-in, a keyword, an alias, a function. Uh, and those are found on the file system and executed on your behalf by the, shell, by, by the bash interpreter. Okay, and this is uh, that uh, alone by itself is really important because that shows that you have much more going on here than just what you get when you click on a user interface. Okay, think of the shell, the bash shell, and a user, a graphical user interface as two ways to interact with your system, right? Well, when you are using the graphical user interface, you double click on an icon on your desktop, you launch this icon. 
Um, this icon could be a shortcut, could be like an executable, could be all, all sorts of things, but you don't really care. When you are using a command line interface and a shell like the bash shell, uh, you can actually get to see what's happening exactly, what kind of tools are available, what kind of tools are you using, and more importantly, you don't just start thing. Okay, you can define aliases here, like you would define shortcut, I guess, on a, on a desktop. You can actually interact programmatically with your shell. You can actually use the built-ins, and you know that the shell is executing them. You can use an external um, command, and this command can be also a shell. You can co reconfigure that second shell you are running to act differently than the, the, premier, the original shell you were using. So there is a, a word of option here that opens to you, simply because we, are, we have full access to the system here. We are not trying to simplify the way that we interact with the system. So don't get me wrong, both type of tools have their place, okay? Um, for some problems or some type of work you have to do, you really do not care about that level of, of complexity, you just want something easy to, to use and easy to, to trigger, okay? So a graphical user interface is nice, but the shell allows you to access your system at a whole different level. And we're going to stop here for this video.